Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. From the shining cloud, the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son. And so, 
kind of deep sadness was coming over them. If you remember the Gospels, Thomas simply says, let us go to die with him. He knows what awaits them in Jerusalem. But Jesus had already been marked as a kind of heretic, a lawbreaker. He would certainly meet with a terrible end. And if they go with him, Thomas knew that they would share in that fate. Let us go to die. Peter was not so anxious to go. If you remember, he had just proclaimed Jesus the Son of God. And yet when Jesus tells him, I must go to Jerusalem where I will be put to death, Peter says, I will never let that happen. Jesus has to tell him, get behind me, Satan. He rebukes Peter because he stands in the way of the path of salvation. Well, it's in their great sorrow and the knowledge of what lay ahead that our Lord gives them a glimpse of what is on the other side of the cross in order that they might not fall into despair as they enter themselves into this pastoral mystery. Up on the mountain, he's transfigured. He's wrapped in the very glory of the kingdom, a glory in which all of them will eventually share and all of us will share in the kingdom. And we're told that Moses and Elijah the representatives of the law and the prophets are there with Christ, and they're discussing, we are told, Jesus' exodus, the great Passover. He himself will be both priest and lamb of sacrifice. They're discussing his exodus through which salvation will come to the world. He will take the death of sin upon himself in order that we might rise to God with him. And it's then strengthened by this mystery alone. Even though Peter would want to perpetuate by building these three little tents for all of them. <clears throat> they make their way down the, the mountain and to Jerusalem. It's in this manifestation of that glory that they find strength to go with the Lord. It is this mystery that we move ever more deeply into throughout the holy season of Lent and prepare ourselves to celebrate most fully during Holy Week. But it's also this mystery, as I said, that we are called to celebrate in every single day of our life. It is this mystery that shapes our very identity as sons and daughters of God. We must not fear those moments of desolation when the cross weighs heavy on our shoulders during our life, when we lose a loved one, when we experience failure, when we know great sickness, because we know that we'll come on the other side of that and what is promised to us is consolation. The consolation that Christ alone himself can offer. The promise of healing, of life, of salvation. It is a difficult road that we walk as Christian men and women. In fact, it is a stumbling block even for many Christians themselves walk the path to Calvary as surely as Christ did, as those who are members of his body. But in walking that path to Calvary, we also walk that path to the resurrection, to new life. This is Christ's promise to us. In our first reading today, we are given a hint of how weighty this promise exactly is. When God enters into that covenant with Abraham, Abraham cuts animals in pieces and spreads them apart. And during the night, a great burning lamp passes between these cut up animals. And it is God saying to Abraham, after promising him that his descendants will number as the stars of the heaven, that if I am unfaithful to this covenant, then let me be torn into pieces like these animals. God promises us through what we receive at this altar to enter into an unbreakable covenant with us. 
covenant rule that will last unto eternity. Knowing this in faith and only in, this, in our hearts, we should have no anxiety about anything at all in this world. We are promised the fullness of life and love. Whatever we might endure, whatever sorrows we might have to bear, they will all pass away into nothingness. And there will be only the fullness of life, joy, and peace. Let's pray now that as we receive the Lord of the Eucharist, we might be given a taste of that peace and hope that